Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> that didn't sound very enthusiastic, Welcome Aaron. Welcome to Good Morning. Welcome to 150. Podcast. It's episode 150. 150. 150. 150. We're very excited for today. It's, it's all about the podcast. It's Marcy and Steve and Aaron Pumpkin Groves. Mm. <laughs> we decided his <laughs> new nickname is Pumpkin. Got the sign to prove it here. His little sign says hello, Pumpkin. I don't know. Hello, does pumpkin. Trisha call you Pumpkin? She calls me Bumpkin. Bumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well. Trisha says no. So, so in other words, we can call you Pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, that's right. fine. That's fine. You're not stealing anybody's it's nickname. It's a great day for it. That's right. And it's all because of Aaron, how much Aaron loves pumpkins. That's right. You see the t-shirt down here? I thought this was a generous gift, but it's actually it's just, not. it was you borrowed. You have to give it just back. Just to mock you. It is borrowed. It is borrowed. <laughs> to mock you. It says, I hate pumpkin spice. There I said it. So, ah, not afraid to say it. Not afraid to say it. No. So our format it's gonna be a great is we're gonna podcast. we're gonna do some sermon discussion, and yep. then we got something special planned. Which we do. Well, actually, details we got to are starting some to come announcements into, in there somewhere. Are we doing Ooh. announcements first? I don't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, but and then so you'll want to tune to the end if you're wondering what we're gonna do for our 150th episode. You have to. Stay at the end or watch it later and fast forward, I guess. There you go. <laughs> However you want. There is a all theme. The discussion. There is a theme. There is a theme. A little preview. I have there a garbage a can. can. No I have a case of water. Can. We're hoping that anybody that would tune in would put a higher premium on the word of God over the <laughs> antics and the stunts that we do. <laughs> so. No pressure uh. there. <clears throat> all right. Well, Marcy, let's do it. Let's do announcements first. Hey, we can do announcements. We, we can. Lot of it feels there. weird to do announcements first, but we can talk about all the Today's things Wednesday. that are going on. It is Wednesday. Uh, we should talk about yesterday, though. Yesterday, Freedom Class started. It did. So you should talk about that first. Yeah, so Trish and I started the Freedom Class last night. It's not too late to sign up if you're still interested. It would have been pretty still funny if when she said that. You said, yeah, yesterday, Freedom Class started. That was it. And <laughs> <laughs> and I anyway, say, I'm sorry anything else you want to say about that? I'm sorry to interrupt. I yeah, no, but it was good. It uh, I think we had uh, read right around a dozen people there. So um, just a good class that we've – Trish has led, I think, four or five times in the past. And just a good place to go to find freedom from things maybe you've struggled with in your past. So not too late to sign up. Not too late. You can still sign up for that. So yep. that's right. That's good. Yep. Uh, and then it's Wednesday. So middle school and high school youth are in tonight with a meal provided and all kinds of games What's and fun. What's the meal? And Bible, Bible lesson. And Do you know what the meal I is? I don't know what the meal is tonight. Hmm. I don't. But pumpkin spice. Yeah, pumpkin I'm sure it'll something. maybe be pumpkin spice something. Poor kids. They, they, maybe they'll feel like it's a great day to come because it's pumpkin spice. I feel like we just lost half of them. Gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> the half who were listening. <laughs> uh, so this Saturday is Fall Fest. So we're excited for Fall Fest. We had to postpone it in September. And coming up on Saturday is Fall Fest. So um, if you're interested in getting in volunteering, you can still contact the office or you can invite people. So we're excited to just welcome people in. And we've got the bounce houses and food and supper and Popcorn and root beer floats and all of the things. So prizes, prizes, face painting. Are we still doing? That? I have no idea. Hmm. So I don't know. Nope, no, Jen says that. no, nope. no on that. But uh, yes <laughs> on everything wanna, else. If you want to paint, your would you face, like feel to? Free. Would you like to do face painting, hey, Aaron? Man. You can come and get your face painted by Aaron. I'm, That's I'm, a little I'm, risky. I'm really good at drawing blobs. <laughs> you could draw pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> you could draw little pumpkins on kids' cheeks. That would be great. We'll give you orange and I can do a cross. That wouldn't be hard. You could do a cross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what you want a cross too? Come on over. <laughs> That's anyway, all you can do. No face painting. So uh noon to four o'clock this Saturday, and we're excited for that. And then another outreach event coming up this month is Trunk or Treat. So Monday, October 31, from 6 to 8, we have Trunk or Treat. We still need trunks. So if you are still interested in bringing Please. your trunk, bringing candy, we would love for you to go to the website. Get signed up for that. Um, we so much still fun. need people to sign up. It, it is, is fun. So we have fun. all the kids who come through, and yeah. it's fun to just be able to bless our community in that way. Merry, not scary. Bring light into a holiday that could otherwise be a dark time and so we're we're excited to be able to do that again this year as well. So, but we need people to sign up. So go to the website, sign up for that, and get registered. Do you have a trunk registered? No, I'm helping pass out cider again oh. this year. See, my little tag says apple cider. 
You guys had a good. You guys had a good trunk. Was that was the Jurassic Park theme last year? Uh, I think that was two years ago. Oh, I did cider last year too. Oh. So, yep. We'll but see. I don't know. Maybe Todd will do something, and we'll see. It's up to you, Todd. It's up to you, Todd. It's all you. We've seen we how Marcy decorates costume. her office. So. That's true. Yeah, Decoration Marcy is not so great in the decorating area. I did not decorate for today. This is not. Jen decorated, right? Not my. Kathy decorated. Work. Kathy decorated. Thanks, Yay. Kathy. That's good. You so, did a yes. so, very pumpkin-y job. It is. It's a very, very, very pumpkin-y yeah, job. Yeah, I'm picking up on a theme. Yep. Mm. I Pumpkins. I think it's pumpkins. Winter. Winter. You wish. Uh, I wish. <laughs> mm, I do wish. Uh, so Trunk or Treat is coming up. Uh, other things coming up. Um, this says the bridge gathers today and again on October 23rd. Is that this Sunday or next Sunday? That was last Sorry. Sunday. That was last Sunday. So they, oh yes, they met on last Sunday and then they'll meet again on October 23rd. Um, we have the grief share holiday event coming up on Saturday, October 22. And so this has, <clears throat> usually we do the grief share holiday event in November, but we're doing a little bit earlier this year. We're offering that in October instead um, just with some other things that were going on. And so um, re- recognizing that the holidays can be a hard time for people to get through, especially if you have lost a loved one. Mm-hmm. And so the Grief Share Holiday event is just a great opportunity for people to come in and find support, find encouragement. They have got some DVDs with some material that just gives some good tips and and um, just thoughts <coughs> for getting through the holidays when it maybe looks different than when it has before. And so that is on Saturday, October 22. Again, you can go to the website and get registered for that or the app. You can also register on the app. Uh, Spirit led work ministry meets October 25th. Men's breakfast will be October 29th and coming in November, which seems like a long ways away, but really it's not. We have our family experience night. So we're going to be doing a serve opportunity that evening. We're going to be packaging some, um, some resources for people, for uh, believers, people who are persecuted Christians in other other nations around mm. the world, and working with the voice of the <clears throat> martyrs in that. And so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. So we're excited for that and to be able to put those together and serve in that way on that night. So families bring their kids and we're going to have a meal that night and it's going to be good. So you can go to our website and register for that as well. Um, Jasper County food pantry is in need of crackers, mac and cheese, soup. You can drop it off in the narthex. What kind of soup? Any Pro- kind of probably soup. Not Maybe pumpkin, pumpkin soup. soup. Pumpkin okay. soup. Will can be you buy pumpkin soup in the store? At the door. Huh? Can you buy like canned pumpkin soup? No, it gets thrown in the garbage as soon as it gets <laughs> to the store. <laughs> Only by Aaron. I bet Trisha would keep pumpkin soup. I she I had, I had squash soup. Squash soup. Did you eat the squash soup? It was a seasonal favorite <coughs> at Panera Bread. Oh, it's even <laughs> Panera Bread yeah. soup. Oh, that's no. good. It sounds delicious. I think pumpkin uh, soup is amazing. <clears throat> can you buy it in a can? I don't, I don't think you'd want it in a can. You'd want it last fresh. Time I, last time I had pumpkin soup, Vicky I would made definitely it. try it. I would try anything pumpkin that came my way. Yeah. I would not say no to anything pumpkin I that came my way. I saw an article that came out like last week about the health benefits of pumpkin. Yeah, that's good. That There's true? all kinds of health benefits. Yeah, really? Uh, you want me to look it up? <laughs> Do you doubt him? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, because I throw out false information all the time. It. That's right. It's crazy. <laughs> so, so that's those are the announcements for today. Good job, Mercy. Thank you. Mer- uh, well, you know, Mercy. we should talk to though. I actually have two other things. So this, I think, was an insert in the bulletin Mercy. on Sunday. Abaco and Florida. So we have yep. two mission trip opportunities coming up, and they are both time sensitive. So deadline for Florida is today. Oh, it is today. Yeah. I didn't know that. Wednesday, I knew yep. that they were leaving on Friday. Yep, so on Friday. Jimmy Shadden has a group that's going to go down for hurricane relief. And he's working with another organization, Eight Days of Hope. Mm-hmm. And they are leaving this Friday to go down and partner with Eight Days of Hope and to help offer hurricane relief, uh, helping to go muck out houses and clean up debris mm-hmm. and uh, whatever else is needed. And like I said, when you go down and you work with an organization like that, and they can kind of help direct you where to go and what the needs are. And yep, they've got everything planned. They've got a place for you to stay. They will feed you. Yep. You just basically have to bring 
work clothes and work gloves and be ready. Be to ready to work. That's right. Labor, so. Yes. So if you're interested in leaving on Friday, I think it's uh, October 14th through the 23rd uh, is the dates that they're going to be gone for that. So if that works for you and you're interested in going, Jimmy needs to know today. So today is your day. And Abaco, uh, Many Hands, we're partnering with Many Hands to take a mission trip to Abaco, which is an island in the Bahamas. Uh, there's a lot of Haitian refugees there and a lot of uh, hurricane devastation from past past hurricanes as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to send a team down to go do painting, debris removal, <laughs> youth activities, compassion ministries, and agriculture initiatives are the areas that we're looking at with that. But the reason that that one is time sensitive is because if you're interested in going, your deposit is due by October 30th. Mm -hmm. So that's time sensitive Sounds for this Sounds like they've had quite a well. bit of interest for Abaco. Yeah, so yeah. That's good. It's been... It's been good. So, yeah, two opportunities to serve in kind of a wider capacity, I guess right. maybe you'd say, than just more our global local community. than regional, right? Yep. So you can go to Florida okay. or more of a worldwide Michigan mission, partnering with Many Hands to go to Abaco and worldwide Michigan. Is that what I said? <laughs> I might have said that. It didn't That's quite okay. come out right. <laughs> Thanks for catching that, Aaron. We're I'm so here for shocked. You. Mercy. <laughs> I'm gonna. Does anybody pronounce your name Mercy? Uh, no. Mercy. Mm -mm, no. Nope. So I, I looked up that. You want to know what the health benefits lot, of pumpkin are? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear the health benefits of pumpkin. Health benefits. Yes. Of, number one, it's this highly nutritious great. and highly rich in vitamin A. Ooh, vitamin A. Mm -hmm. 245% what is vitamin of your a recommended good for? daily allowance. Yeah, what's vitamin A? Vitamin A is good for fighting uh, chronic disease. Oh, that's mm. good. Funny, so, I have no chronic which disease. Brings anyway. up, which brings up point number two. So number one, it's high, high in vitamins, especially typically vitamin A. It's <laughs> it's a high, it, it has a high antioxidant content, mm -hmm. and may reduce your risk of chronic diseases. Hmm. Um, it boosts vitamins. It, it has vi those vitamins in the it boosts your immunity. So such as vitamin C and vitamin A, I'll have immunity. So fall boosters. is a good time to have pumpkin as you head into yeah. winter and you need a better immunity. A lot Lots of the of nutrients things. in it, it may be good for your eyesight. A lot of the nutrients in it have been proven to to affect your eyesight and improve your eyesight. Stick to carrots. Nutrient you density and low calorie count oh, promotes you weight loss. Oh, there you go. I'm trying to gain weight. <laughs> Unless, of course, you have it, like, with sugar and uh, pumpkin spice and a latte. Yeah, does this count for pumpkin spice lattes? Yeah. <laughs> pumpkin spice Oreos. Lattes Antioxidant count. content in pumpkins. Uh, has been linked to lowering your risk of cancer. Oh, there you go. And uh, it has potassium, vitamin C, and fiber. Or have good. Uh, it's good for your heart. And finally, it has compounds in it that are healthy for your skin. Hmm. I feel like my heart is really too big anyway. <laughs> too powerful. Um, and uh, my skin. It's good for your skin. Your skin needs a little help. I don't think help. there's any helping my pale Irish born <laughs> genetic everybody skin. needs help mm. oh anyway check out all those benefits check out all those that's benefits. right all kinds of benefits to pumpkin so that's all i've got for announcements stick to my multivitamin and pumpkin <laughs> pumpkin spice it'll mm. help you out it's, I, I think pumpkin spice is totally different than pumpkin right could be i don't know what's in pumpkin spice <laughs> I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a clue what's in pumpkin spice. It's got to be a little pumpkin in it. Mm. I'm pretty sure. I'm, <laughs> yeah, probably. Who knows? All right. The so we should talk stuff about the message. Has pumpkin in it. Yeah, that's right. What? We should talk about the message. Are we talking we about the message next? Yeah, yeah let's Kay. do that. All right, shoot. What'd you learn? <laughs> What, what, what do you think, Aaron? I'm, what I'm the scriptures so distracted Aaron, right now. Scriptures tell Aaron's you. a little distracted on the podcast today. A little bit like, I don't know, I'm I'm anticipating all kinds of things to come. So I will start. Yeah. I thought that this was, I thought it was a great message. When you just read through the scripture, I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting to see where Steve lands this week. Where is this going to go? But but I thought that it was a great message. And, um, you know, starting with that idea of how do we as believers and really even more than that, how do we as the church walk that line of grace and love, but also, but also with the holiness of God. Right. And, and, and you and talked justice. about too, yes, you talked about too, how we can have a tendency to land on one side or the other where you can be like, Oh, you have to, 
do everything right and you can't sin. And if you have sin, then we're going to address all of the sin in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and you can be quick to point out other people's sin or expel people from the Mm. church or whatever that looks like. But then on the (laughs) other hand, you can be like, Oh, God loves you. It doesn't matter what you do. And so what we're trying to go for is that more of that middle ground of, we want to acknowledge the holiness of God and we right. want to acknowledge that we do sin, but how do we walk with people in that through grace and love? And, and as a church, uh, what, what is our responsibility in, in how we walk with people through that? And so I thought it was good. I, I feel like I, I, I love how we work through the Bible and work through scripture and we just, we come to a scripture and we talk about what it means through that mm-hmm. expository preaching, because I mean, how many churches out there that, that like, if you were going to do topical preaching, how many churches are going to be like, let's talk about church discipline today, right? right. Like let's have a, a topical message on church discipline and uh, <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. And especially where the text goes like. And so so I just think it's so good that when you work through scripture, all of these topics do come up and they do surface as you work your way through it, because right. because I I think that and I feel like we've seen this, especially over the last two years where circumstances have just put people in a place where they're like, oh, but but I feel like there is a lack of understanding even of the Matthew 18 principles of if I have a problem or I have a conflict or I see something that I feel like needs to be addressed, how do I address that within the church? And so I just feel like, you know, when you land in a message like this, it's, it's a good reminder for the church, but it also, I, I just felt you did a really good job of putting out the, the structure, you know, I love the word framework, but the yeah. framework and the structure of how do we, as a local body of believers, address things that are happening or going on and hold each other accountable, but yet love love each right. other through it. And how do we approach that? And how do we approach that in a biblical way based on what the Bible says and right. based on, you know, God's heart in the midst of all of that? And so one of well, those big there- ideas being restoration and reconciliation not see one of the and and so one of the things you battle but there's this prevailing view that is in our society today that says if you love me then you'll approve of what Mm -hmm. i do Mm -hmm. right and it's like well now wait a minute love means acceptance love means acceptance and and approval and affirmation and it's like no no it doesn't i mean and you know I use the, I mean, I use the analogy of my own raising our kids. It's like, you know, it's because I love you mm-hmm. that this is not okay. Right. Right. And so you have to have this, you have to have this, ba- you need to seek this balance. But, you know, one of the things you know going into a message like this is that in many ways this has been abused by churches too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they go on these crusades and they maybe even shun people because they're they're struggling with sin and, and there's a hypocrisy involved because, mm-hmm. you know, we're all sinners. Right. And so there's like this idea that like, man, you know, I, you know, I, I, all I received was judgment and condemnation Mm -hmm. when I know that we're all sinners. It's like, yeah, we are all sinners. And so we have to find that line, like you said, where we basically say, you know, I love you and I'll walk with you and we'll work our way through this, but this is not okay. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the American church has, has come out of a season of being on the Holy crusade side and not, and skipped completely over that balance clear over to, you know, everything's okay. And it's all about just loving people. And, and I don't know, I just feel like we're, we're in this shift now where, and we're seeing it in our, our I think it's in our society. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I can look at just in my generation, you know, um, I mean, we, we still in grade school, I can remember a time where I had, I was facing the paddle and, uh, I'm pretty sure they don't do that anymore. Nope, they don't. <laughs> and if they did <laughs> they do that, they didn't even do that when I was in grade school. All you know school. what would break loose <laughs> if they right. did that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so I think we live in a society where discipline is going by the wayside, mm-hmm. and it's equated with um, discipline is equated with like uh, violence or being mean. Mm-hmm. When you know, in my day, discipline was was out of love. Mm-hmm. You know, and even in the scripture, it talks about you know God disciplines those that He loves, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's that's a biblical verse, right? And well, and so, in Proverbs, there's all kinds of verses about 
parents discipline your children right. and you know <laughs> and i'll tell you what i don't care i our kids were disciplined and so you know it not i wasn't a tyrant you know i don't think that's correct i think that i think that you you know you're I think as a parent, you're supposed to be this benevolent leader, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you make it clear to your kids, nothing's ever done out of rage or retribution, but it's done out of love and, mm -hmm. and, and concern for them, mm -hmm. um, which I think is the same discipline we do in a church. Mm -hmm. We don't do it out of vengeance or retribution. We do it out of a genuine desire for that person to be restored. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think that's a... That's, that just has to be a very important mindset that you have mm -hmm. in such matters. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, th I do think, you know, I, so, so part of what, what, um, I mean, obviously the word of God, but, um, kind of drives my, my perspective on this, but it also goes back to that idea. I always remember Kevin when the first time he said, what do you think <clears throat> a church is? Do you think it's a hospital for, right. for sinners or do you think it's a museum for saints? Yep. And that was always this really great visual for me mm -hmm. because a lot of people think it should be a museum for the saints. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to, you know, we can't, we have to, we have to be very well guarded and very well behaved and all these things. And then, but the hospital for sinners is like, you know, we got work to do. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to bring, we're inviting <laughs> in these sinners and introducing them to Jesus. And then with the Holy spirit, we're getting them back to hell. It's mm -hmm. going to get dirty and That's you got to get dirty. Yep. It's, mm -hmm. it's messy. It's dirty. And, um, there may be setbacks, but it's just this long process mm -hmm. about restoration. Right. Mm -hmm. I think too, that, you know, you mentioned the phrase, it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that goes along well with that idea of the church is meant to be a hospital for sinners because it's that place where you can come to find help, but it, it doesn't mean that you stay where you're at and double down on whatever it is. It's, it's that, yeah. How do I move forward? I'm in here a to get better. Way. I'm yes. not here for everybody to say, "Hey, there's nothing wrong with me." Right. Yep. Right. And and you also brought up you can't take it out on others. Yep. Right. Right. You can't stay there and you can't take it out on mm -hmm. others. Right. That's that's, that's Man, two rules. So yep. it, it's kind of interesting, but you know, when I go into a hospital, I, have, I really have two reasons for being there. One is I'm visiting somebody who's sick, mm -hmm. or the other one is I'm sick. Right. Those are my only reasons for being in a hospital. Yep. So I have something I need to do while I'm there. I don't just go to a hospital and say, yeah, I just want to hang out in your waiting room. Right. Maybe talk to a doctor, too. It's just a fun place to hang out. Well, is there something <laughs> wrong with you? No, no, everything's fine. I'm good. Yep. I just want to, I want to sit here and I want to judge all the sick people that walk in. Right. Right? I mean, it, it, I know I'm being a little overly exaggerated, but at the same time, we have to be aware of that. Because mm -hmm. I do think, I do think that does occur. And mm -hmm. we just have to have the right perspective of why we're here and what the point of it is. Right. Um, and, and I do, I would say too, that, you know, a big, so this person that Paul talks about, and I talked about this in the message, but this person that Paul is talking about that you should expel from your fellowship mm -hmm. in uh, the second chapter of second Corinthians, yeah. he says, you need, now you need to welcome this person back and mm -hmm. forgive them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is kind of that element of, there is a point where grace needs to be applied. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's usually when they're repentant mm -hmm. and when they're sorrowful for what they've done and they, they admit, you know what, this, this is not okay with God. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. That's good. Is what good. else you got, Aaron? Aaron's a little distracted got today. Pumpkin on the brain. Got pumpkin on his mind. Uh, it's crazy. <clears throat> Don't know why. I think it's interesting that... Uh, <laughs> That Paul basically says, you're supposed to release this person to Satan. Yeah. Mm. That was Talk a big about principle. That a that, more. So, so for me, that was the revelation. And, and, and the revelation is, <clears throat> is that regardless of what people think, there is a special grace within the church, hmm. within the gathering of believers. There's mm -hmm. a special grace in that. It's what drives our, our sacraments. It what, it's what drives our worship. And there is, I mean, this kind of addresses the people that say, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know what? You're right. For salvational purposes, you don't need to go to church. But there is a special grace imparted upon the church mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. And, and at no time does he say this person is not a believer. 
Right. What he says is, is if this person is going to be willfully disobedient to God, release him to Satan by expelling him from the church. Right. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like it, in the, the herd mentality. So as Peter says, the, the devil is like a lion prowling around looking for whom to, to mm -hmm. devour. It's like the antelope just kicked another antelope out of the herd. Right. Moved and isolation. said, you're on your own. <clears throat> yeah. But we, we don't think of it in terms of that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is that. Mm -hmm. Theologically. Yeah. One of the places where you kind of landed in that idea, too, was um, the idea of fellowship. So it's not just about coming to church on a Sunday morning and being in attendance, but it's about being in true fellowship with other believers. And so I thought that that was a good just in the midst of this whole discussion and the whole text and the whole message that I just thought that was a good thing to think about also is it's about how am I in fellowship with other people and so when you look at uh, that picture of you know where he does say like leave him at the mercy of Satan and we don't think about it that way mm -hmm. necessarily but but it's not just about like oh you can't attend it's 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 about the fellowship and what you're doing is hurting the fellowship of mm -hmm. believers and sometimes I think that with our own sin we see our sin as well. Maybe it affects me, but it's it's not affecting anybody else. Right. right. And that's really not true. Like when we're it our our how how we live and all of that, it affects it affects the whole body and yeah. in how we're in relationship with each other and all of that. And so it weakens um, the body. It yeah. does. Yeah. And so I think that that's I just thought that was a good well, piece of that too. And Paul talks about in verse nine and ten and eleven about you. You're not to associate with people who engage willingly in these things. Mm -hmm. And it even clarifies, I'm not talking about the unbelievers. <laughs> right. I'm talking about the believers. Right. And mm -hmm. you're right. It does, th there, you become a product of the environment you're mm -hmm. a part of. And so it's just. Influence, this, right? Right. Yeah. And it's well, it uses idea. the analogy of how <clears throat> yeast permeates the dough yeah. and mm -hmm. how it works its way through. And, 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 and that to me, is an explanation of how influence works in a negative way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, if you are a person that basically says, hey, I'm a Christian and I do this and there's nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a ripple effect to that. Right. And, I, and I think that, you know, and I think quite frankly, you know, one area where I think this is highest on display is as a parent with your children. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I remember that phrase, um, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh -huh. And, you know, we've kind of reached this point where, like, that's a really stupid right. saying. Right. Um, kids are going to do as you as your parents right. do. Mm -hmm. they they're just going to they're, they're gonna do that. And, and so there is a danger in having that level of influence mm -hmm. and using it. And parents, I don't think, always think about how they're influencing their kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Well, yep. let's, let's talk about the sin of a believer, too, because we're all sinners, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Paul identifies three, three of factors that factor into um, the kind of sin that he's talking about. Number one is it's a well-known sin. Yeah. So it's basically flaunted. Right. Um, and, public. It's a right. public sin. It's out in the open. And saying it's no big deal. It's yeah. Number two, it's scandalous. Right, so even non-believers see it as what they're doing is wrong. And number three, it's ongoing. Right, and there's no uh, repentance or repentant heart mm -hmm. going along with it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> don't hear that, you know, you shouldn't hang out with other believers because we're all sinners, you know, or, you know, you shouldn't hang out with someone because they struggle with a sin. Like, but where's their heart? Like, right, like man, I I need help with this. You know, mm -hmm. I'm struggling with this. Um, those are the people we need to rally around, and you know, well. And I will say probably the most prevalent, and, and I know these would be controversial statements, but probably the most prevalent place where that's at in our culture today is in sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, th there is, so there is this kind of all in this movement that's like, says, well, you know what? There's nothing wrong with this, and it's how God made me, and he's okay with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that God can't love you? No, obviously not. No, mm -hmm. but it means that, you know, we all have areas of our life. And, and you know, when when we move to a place where we almost make sin a part of our identity, <coughs> mm -hmm. like, who am I without this? Right. This is who I am. It's like, no, you're, you, you were, you, 
you were baptized. He uses the analogy of being baptized, and he says, you died to your old life. Uh-huh. Now you're a part, you're raised in Christ. Christ is your identity, mm-hmm. not sin. Mm-hmm. And so that in itself gives you the power to overcome it mm-hmm. because it's not your identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's not the narrative that we use in, in areas, especially in areas of sexuality. It's like, no, this is my identity. Mm-hmm. Like, no, no, it's not. Right. Mm-hmm. Let Christ be your identity, and right. and, we'll, and we'll we'll move forward from there. Mm-hmm. And that that's a big issue. And so, but it's just it's just amazing how we turn certain behaviors into this is who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, no, mm-hmm. not if you're in Christ. Right. That's who you are. Yep. Right. So it's an important message that you need to get out there. Mm-hmm. But. Good. Thank Good. goodness. <clears throat> My identity is in Christ and not in something else. That's anymore. right. I think it's I, I, I think it's also, you know, one of the other aspects that I would share that kind of leapt out at me that I knew, but I real it, it really came as an emphasis to me is how discipline has to be carried out assembled. So mm-hmm. it's not one person that makes the decision. It has to be when when he, when you follow the Matthew eighteen, so you have you, you go to the person that sinned against you, mm-hmm. you tell them and you invite them into repentance. And if they say, no, I didn't do, you know, that problem's your problem. Then you go and you get a couple other people and then you go, cause so you have witnesses mm-hmm. and um, invite them into repentance again. And then the third time is, is you bring them before the church. Mm-hmm. And the way that that's been done in the past is that literally during the church service, you would walk somebody into the front of the church and the entire church would be present, right. including visitors. <clears throat> right. And you would exercise church discipline. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, as you kind of do that, it's more about an assembly, which isn't about the number, but it is about, um, you know, it, it's kind of a, it's a, um, a communal decision, mm-hmm. right? It's not just one person's opinion. It's not right. even two or three people's decision. It's a, it's, it's a group decision. And, you know, in our particular form of governance, that would mean that if it came to that point uh, in matters of discipline, we, it would, it would go through the elders and the deacons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. It would go, you know, go through the executive team on staff. It would go through the executive board and it would land with <coughs> elders and deacons. Mm-hmm. And then that would be the process. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have. Er- I, I mentioned in the first service that in our 13 years of ministry, there's mm-hmm. only been twice that we've asked people to to leave our fellowship. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was because they were hurting other people. So right. That was. <clears throat> they were kind of a threat to others, and uh, so that that kind of it didn't really fall under a matter of discipline. It more fell under a matter of uh, shepherding, mm-hmm. right. and taking care of people. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I, an, another another piece of all this is usually as you enter into the Matthew 18 process, people usually leave mm-hmm. before you right. get to the third stage because they just, they're angry. Right. And they don't want to talk about it. Right. But. Yep. That's good. It is good. That's good. Yes. Yeah. So I think, too, you know, one of the things that just sticks out is that whole idea of accountability and how mm-hmm. within within church discipline and within the whole structure that even that you just mentioned of you know, from with staff and the executive board and, and consistory and just within that leadership structure, just the accountability that that is there. And um, so one thing I wanted to share that I didn't get a chance to share because I ran out of time. Yeah. Is just real quick as I was as I was writing this down. So as we talk about law, the law to the proud, grace to the humble, yep. what's the disciplinary flow chart look like? And so obviously, so if you have a flow chart, Step one mm-hmm. is you speak truth and you invite people to turn from evil behavior. That's mm-hmm. that's present, but depending on what they do, the next steps go. If they if if they listen and they and they submit and they understand, then you kind of move to step two, which is then you restore over time, minister to as needed, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if they're they're against it, then um, to me the process that follows is is. First, you minimize influence, which means you remove from any leadership positions. And then the next step is, if it comes to that, is removal from the church. And I wrote down here, minimize the yeast effect on the dough. Hmm. And, it, and, and in my mind, you're at a place that is so toxic that you really have no other choice. Right. <clears throat> it's a detriment to let it continue. Mm-hmm. 
So, and I just think that's kind of an important mm. um, piece as, as you work through and wade through spiritual mm-hmm. discipline. Yeah. That's but good. I think it, I think it does come to that point where, you, so to back things up, Paul is worried about the fellowship, mm-hmm. right? This person is doing what they're doing, release them to Satan, but do it to protect. Right. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. this person will repent and come back mm-hmm. and, and God will use that situation to restore them. But you have an obligation to not let that yeast get in mm. and affect other right. people. So yep. important part as well. But oh. anyway. That's good. Yeah. It's a good message. Go. Mm. Any previews for where we're headed next week? <laughs> it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you that much. When I signed the on to this when I signed on to this when I signed on to this uh, sermon series. Let's go. I'm there. like, this would be great for the church. For the like, church. <laughs> And it is. It is. It is. This was a great message. and I was very tired when I got home. I bet you were. Sunday. Definitely. <laughs> yep. I know. I read the text and I was like, huh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you know. That's good. I, my biggest concern was just getting through it all. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to do entire chapter six. I might have to bust up chapter six next, over the next couple Two weeks. Two weeks. So. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It was only thir- was it 13 yeah, verses? Yeah, it was only like 13 five? verses. It wasn't a lot of verses, just so but it much was a lot of content. To, yeah. Then when you go back on the whole, you know, church discipline and how to, even even the marks of the church you talked about and Well, I felt all like you had to, you, so, you had to yeah, define no, what a church is and then yep. you had to define who is in the church. Yes. Yep. No, I agree completely. So, yeah. That was good. That was <laughs> all very right. good. So, all right. 20 verses next week. I don't know. No, 20 Oh, verses. 20. I thought you said how many. Sorry. 20. Misheard Two zero. that. <laughs> there you go. All right. Part three. Are you ready for part three, Aaron? I thought we were done. Nope. Not done today. You've got your trash can. It's time to celebrate 150. That's right. We're going to celebrate our 150th episode. Celebrate. It's time to celebrate, Celebrate. Pumpkin. Celebrate. Pumpkin Groves. <laughs> celebrate. Dance to the music. Okay. I have. Tell everybody what we're doing. We okay. So, in honor of our 150th episode, we have all pumpkin spice things. So we have some pumpkin pie, pu- or pumpkin spice things to try. And you can tell by Aaron's face right now that he is extremely excited about this. We have pumpkin drinks. What drinks are you serving right now, Jen? I didn't know it would be orange. Uh, this, this, is a cheap, this is a hot cocoa bomb. Don't hot worry. cocoa bomb. <laughs> It's orange. Okay, so in pumpkin spice, there is, oh, Erin, this is not bad at all. Cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, allspice, and cloves. That is what pumpkin spice is made of. And pumpkin. Doesn't say that. I don't know. It doesn't say that. <laughs> I think that's the spice. There's no, there's no pumpkin, pumpkin, zero pumpkin spice. spice. Health benefits to this. <laughs> I don't know. That's not what it says. Oh, so, uh, and then number two says it has quite a history. There are two recipes for spice filled pumpkin pie in Amelia Simmons' 1798 reprint of her cookbook, American Cookery. One Do you made have that with nutmeg. Ma- no, no. <laughs> you can probably Do you have it. a cookbook, Marcy? I do have a cookbook. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I do. Uh, one made with nutmeg and ginger, and the other with allspice and ginger. So ginger must be allspice. What is allspice? Uh, the pumpkin hot cocoa is a thumbs up. Yeah. I just it's weird because it's orange. Is it chocolatey? Hold it up for people to see. I want to see it. I didn't. <laughs> How am I, I supposed to it. hold it up? Oh, that is. Let me turn it over. Aaron's going to be like this. Here, look. Oh, whoops. Let me pour it into the garbage can. I'm so sorry. I have pumpkin spice tea. So mine is just tea. So I'm excited to try it. I'm going to try it. So this is pumpkin spice. Mmm, this is good. It tastes very fallish. Read the third one, Marcy. Uses for the spice blend didn't stop at pie, though. While it's unclear who the first person was to add pumpkin spice into a latte, the idea to combine the two likely wasn't a Starbucks invention. The Starbucks employee credited with bringing the idea to the company is Peter Dukes. Then... The director of Espresso, whose team created other seasonal drinks like the eggnog latte and peppermint mocha. I hate eggnog. So, I hate pepper- 
I like a pumpkin spice latte. It's really sweet, though. I've gone away from... Can they hear you? Do you need a microphone? Just ruined the beef jerky. My she got the beef jerky from an Etsy shop. And it's spice. It looks a little like dog food. Jeez. Do you have two on your plate, Aaron? I'm so impressed. Well, I'm going to probably rinse off one of them. I got water here. So I washed the pumpkin spice off. Are we supposed I'm to eat sure it? I'm not sure I taste the pumpkin spice. Steve is eating it. Are we supposed to I'm eat it? I'm going to try a drink yeah, of this. Kathy just notified me of a drink of beer. So she's watching online. She's watching online. She needs you to drink oh, it. Oh, that's bad. That's so bad. It's very orange. <laughs> it's like warm. I don't this. know why. I don't know what qualifies this, but it doesn't taste like pumpkin spice, does it? Yeah, it's got a little pumpkin uh, in it. I don't necessarily taste bad. the spice, but it does have pumpkin in it. That's awesome. That's I'll interesting. Take some more. Pass that down. Mm, it's kind of spicy. I can smell the meat. I got spice in the back of my I'm throat. I'm intrigued by this. This might be one that I actually suffer through just because there's. So meat. I do have to admit, I just added pumpkin <laughs> spice to some beef jerky. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's good. Beef jerky is my deal, man. I could eat That's this stuff. Um, so you have some nuts to try and some Oreos. I'll put that over here for later. Might have oh, another one of those. Yeah. A napkin. Aaron, you, no, you can't have a napkin if that means you're going to spit it I'm out not... in the napkin. Is that what you're going to do? No, I'm <laughs> pumpkin spice <laughs> my way nuts, off. huh? Mmm. Yep. Pumpkin spice Oreos. You should oh, read the packaging. What uh, what Look does the, the pumpkin oh. oozing out of the Oreo? With the so what kind gross. of what kind of an outside is it? Is it like it looks like a a different kind of cookie? I'm not gonna eat a towel. Oh yeah, I will in a little bit. You're right. Yes, because there's are something just, else too. Are we just sampling it or are we uh, do it I don't know. Steve's like he's like leading the way the down there. Uh, pumpkin spice flavor cream. So naturally, natural and artificial flavoring in the pumpkin spice Oreo. I'm wondering what the cookie thing is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what's the cookie part? Do you eat your Oreos plain or do you pull them apart? I am together, but I wanted to taste the icing. Mm, that's, that's much better. If you rinse the pumpkin spice off the beef jerky, it tastes a lot better. Aaron, that's terrible. Why are you piece? Why is that terrible? You rinsed it off. Oh. It's pumpkin spice day. I already had one with pumpkin spice. How's Oreos? Mm, I only ate the outside. Oh. I haven't eaten the pumpkin yet. Get the full effect of the pumpkin this way. <laughs> I'm gonna have it in my teeth. about watching me eat an Oreo. <laughs> it's stuck on my teeth. How is it? It's stuck on my teeth, I can tell. Yeah, but how is it? It's not bad. I'm going to try the nuts before the Oreo. How are the nuts? There's people watching this that love pumpkin spice and are like, what is your deal? There's a lot of people watching right now, actually. So. I'm gonna be like, it's only going to get your... better. The pumpkin spice Oreos are not bad. The, the nuts aren't bad. Oh, I haven't had the oh. nuts here. They're not very so good. far, the no. jerky has my vote for the best. All right, the, oh, they're almonds. I love almonds. These are pumpkin spice almonds. Uh, fall edition almonds. California almonds seasoned with pumpkin and spices. They're very brown for <laughs> pumpkin aren't spice. Almonds for, are almonds brown? <laughs> they we, are, know, we know almonds is, aren't generally brown. <laughs> this is quite the coating on it, though. It's a coating all the way around the entire almond. What is? Did it's you very dark. Thing of beef jerky. I guess so. I'll trade you the pumpkin spice beef jerky for that. Mm. I'm gonna need another Did water. Did you taste the pumpkin on the almonds? Did you have the almonds? Did I get a water too because. Here you in other go. Words, Aaron yeah. had brought Putting over butter into the an entire <laughs> pack of water with him. Jen oh, you, took it away you didn't from look him. Look at that cracker. It smells like peanut butter. Oh, that's gross. I can't there you believe go, you gave there's that another, to me. There's one with that one, too. That's gross. There's ants on these crackers. There is? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yes, don't eat the crackers. Ants on them? Yeah, <laughs> it really was. It's extra protein. I'm glad you saw that before I Her, just was pitch that it. close. Pitch it. 
Can we at least scan the food for ants before we put it, bring it in there? <laughs> However, we did have a podcast uh, where we ate. It's a pumpkin spiced ant. Why would you eat the, it, Marcy? What? Like the grasshopper or the cricket? Remember? All right, so the peanut butter is not. These are different. I haven't tried the peanut butter. I have. I, my peanut butter is on an ant. Uh. I haven't gotten any yet. Here, Aaron, I need the peanut butter. Black spots on it. You're good. Is my spoon clean? Yes. Oh, this is chunky. I don't know about this. <laughs> here, pass it down here. Hold on. Take <clears throat> some and pass it down. I know. I do have to try it. Pumpkin spice peanut butter. Nutty novelties. Why? It's awesome. High protein, no cholesterol, no trans fat. Great with pancakes. There you go, Aaron. You guys do pancakes every Saturday, don't you? Yeah. Gluten free. It's good for your eyesight. Sugar. Try with oatmeal. It's pumpkin spice. Small batches, Is freshly it? ground in Telford, Pennsylvania. All right. Have you tried the peanut butter yet? I haven't tried the Oreo yet. What? It's it's peanut butter with pumpkin spice. All right. I'm gonna try it. Oh, that is, stop! Oh my goodness, I win. I win. He spit out the cookie. That's good peanut butter. I win. Oh, this is different. Okay, pumpkin spice meringues. Oh my goodness. And Kit Kats. Kit Kats? I'm just having one of these. What is it? What? Here you go. Kit Kats. You're like ruining every good thing in this world. What are meringues? What are meringues? What are meringues? It's a little goodness that melts in your mouth. It's, What's it's up with wh- the, it's like whipped we, milk? How am I doing this? Pe- oh, how do I do the peanut butter? Uh, you have a spoon, the plastic spoon up there. Just use even, the spoon. I don't even use. Uh, Just dip the spoon. You're fine. <laughs> wow, that Kit Kat tastes really pumpkin spicy. I didn't get a Kit Kat. Yeah. Nope. It smells like peanut butter. I have meringues. Aaron's got two. Did you give Aaron two on purpose? Two what? Kit Kats? Aaron has oh, I don't two. Want Here, that I'll many. take one of Aaron's Kit Kats. Here, you, Here, you can have a couple of these Jelly Bellies, too. Oh, oh Jelly Bellies, but not Bean Boozled, right? right? Bean Boozled is the worst challenge we have ever done. Ever. Uh, All right, what are we trying first? What have you eaten already down there, Steve? I've did you eaten eat the everything meringue? but the Jelly Bellies. Did you eat the meringue? I did, yeah. How was it? It's all right. Peanut butter's not bad because I can't mm. taste the pumpkin spice. Tastes like peanut not butter. a big meringue. Mm. What? What is a meringue? I don't know. I don't really know it's what like, it is. Isn't it? Sugar and oh, egg yeah, whites. That's right. Sugar and egg whites. And pumpkin spice. Not milk. It's yeah. It's egg whites. No. Sugar I don't really meringue. taste the pumpkin spice in. Oh my goodness, Erin. <laughs> You, can I just point out that number one, you weren't ba- this bad. So bad. You weren't this bad with the hot wings challenge, and you weren't this bad with being boozled. Really, you weren't this bad. Oh, that Steve was and I are like, bad. this isn't bad at all. The meringue. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. I couldn't barely taste the pumpkin spice in the meringue. <laughs> Did you taste the pumpkin Holy spice cow. in the meringue, Steve? Huh? Oh, Trish is eating it. Yeah. She'll finish it for you. This is a contest. Clearly, everyone here Maybe has I beat you. Maybe I should ask how much we have of all this stuff before we begin. You like it? How much no, do you need to eat? she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. it. Not my favorite. Follow it up with a beef jerky at Did the end. Did you do a jelly belly oh, yet? Dear. No, I haven't done a jelly belly. I'm working on getting a, this uh, Kit Kat belly. open. Did you do a jelly belly? I did. All right, know. I'm going to eat the Kit Kat. Great. I did more than one. I did a few, a couple. Hmm. Did, I don't even like jelly beans by themselves. That, I, the kick, it's okay, but like, if you're like, do you buy a pumpkin? Here, if you buy it, do you buy a pumpkin? (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Do you buy a pumpkin Kit Kat or a regular Kit Kat? It's dirty dish. dirty I would go for the regular Kit Kat. Which one? The Jelly Belly? More cookies? No ants. The Jelly Belly was not bad. (sighs) What are these? Exactly. These are pumpkin cheesecakes. Hold on. I, I'm still oh, that like sounds good. Kit Kats. Yeah. How is the Kit Kat? Oh, it's, right. It even looks <laughs> like pumpkin. The Kit Kat is kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hold your uh, your yeah. trash up for you, but that would be I disgusting. I think that's the one that so. tastes the most like pumpkin spice. Yeah, I don't Kit really Kat. care for the Kit Kat. Did you eat all yours? 
Nice. Steve's like, of course, I'm not going to lose this challenge. Did you try the good cookie? Yeah, I'll try a good cookie. Oh, it's, it's kind of hard. <laughs> oh. oh, that looks gross, too. Oh. I would just like to know that Aaron's trash can is on my side and not <laughs> Steve's side. And That's because this was your idea. <laughs> this was not my idea. Uh. I just knew about it before you did. The cookie's okay. Ugh. I like the cream filling. What is the yeah, cookie? Yeah, no, it's good. What is it? It is a pumpkin cheesecake sandwich cookie. I like cheesecake. I like the cheesecake inside. What part? So the cheesecake's on the inside? Mm -hmm, the cheesecake is the filling. But you have to eat the pumpkin part to get the cheesecake. I know, the cookie part is a little hard. I can smell the cheesecake. Mm-hmm. like this battle in my mouth <laughs> between good and bad. Go so battle funny. Oh, did you hear that? This Go isn't ahead bad. and give them the popcorn. This isn't bad. This cookie isn't I'm bad. I'm going to need another water. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Having to rinse that nastiness out of your mouth, huh? I can't. I can't hey, I am doing this a lot sugar. better than you are. All right. If there are winners in this you challenge, like I, pumpkin spice. I clearly have done better than you. I would say after eating all of this, like I don't know that I would say like I don't mind pumpkin spice, but Took a by the if you were to cookie. be like, do you want a regular Oreo or a pumpkin spice Oreo or a regular Not Kit a big Kat fan of that or a pumpkin <laughs> spice <laughs> Kit Kat? <laughs> I would go with regular. Popcorn. Let me try it. Ugh. Ooh. That, that, no, that the aftertaste is is worse. That's kind of yeah. Shouldn't have said anything. Watch this expression. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't even, you can't even get it down. I'm chewing it. It's very chewy. Oh, I found. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it out of this bad. challenge, the it isn't very is good. No, bad. however, I did swallow it. Out of this challenge, how many things have you actually eaten and swallowed? How many? The beef jerky. The beef jerky. Oh, That's man, it. The aftertaste is terrible. <laughs> oh, I know that popcorn's not good. I don't. I mean, I'm. That's like. This one is. It tastes really food. clovey. What? Have some beef jerky. <laughs> That has too much clove spice. Okay, in but it. I'm taking another one too. What is this? Trisha says this one's good. She won't let you down. They are really good. I can like see your spit up out of there. That's disgusting. That's so gross. And you cannot. That is totally cheating. I've already done this challenge. You're uh, you're putting water over the beef jerky. I'll take a couple. What are they? Pumpkin pretzels. Pumpkin pretzels. Those are good. Steve approved. They uh, they minimize. That's a lot that, of pumpkin on the outside. About, so the popcorn has like too many cloves in it. Oh, really, really clovey. Really clovey. Mm. These remind me of the white chocolate dipped pretzels that you make at Christmas. Yeah. Almond bark pretzels that you make at Christmas. Only they have a little hint of pumpkin. They are very good. There you go. Nope. Mm -hmm. That's it. why his new nickname is Pumpkin. His little tag says, hello, Pumpkin. This just affirms everything I already knew about myself. <laughs> hey, Aaron, try something Sometimes new. You might like it. Aaron. No, I know I don't like it. So why why do I have to remind myself that I don't like it? It's all for Jesus and the sake of the gospel. <laughs> it's, like really? taking, it's like taking the five-minute cold really? shower in the morning. You're just proving yourself. That you can take yourself out of your. Have you done zone. that yet? How, how, that was another thing from I've the done message. That I've done it before. <laughs> Once. <laughs> well, when at boot camp, all the all the showers were cold. I had it. So I've been doing this now for about three weeks, and I have not yet gotten used to the cold. Every time, every time I get in there, it's like, ooh, ooh. There it is again. But. 
After about a minute, then you get used to it. Although the pretzels, not bad. Pretzel, I think the pretzels are good. They're probably one of my favorites. Pretzels are pretty good. That wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. It does taste like the almond bark. Huh? Oh. What are you putting it on? He's loading something up. <laughs> I didn't know we had pumpkin spice. Uh, would you like some more fun facts? Sure. In the course of developing the pumpkin spice latte, the Starbucks research and development team poured espresso shots on top of pumpkin pies, tasting different combinations to determine the best ratio of cinnamon and nutmeg to coffee and steamed milk. But it wasn't until 2015 that Starbucks started including real pumpkin in the drink. That's interesting. Uh, number eight. According to a 2015 Forbes study, Americans, oh my, Americans spend close what to $500 million dollars on pumpkin flavored products each year. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron spends That'd be zero. $510 million. Or five. Aaron saves money. Zero dollars. Number six. Since 2003, Starbucks has sold more than 424 million pumpkin spice lattes in the U.S. alone. If they were so that great, was posted in why June don't they have them year round? Because it's a fall treat. <laughs> don't it's you a think? Four hundred twenty-four. Did you say four hundred twenty-four million? Yes. Pumpkin so that spice like equates, lattes. That Starbucks. equates to like well over a billion dollars just in pumpkin spice lattes. Just in pumpkin spice lattes. So as a business owner, yep. like why wouldn't you br- want to keep that around all year? Or does the I think it makes it special that it's really kind mm. of a fall thing. It's like pumpkin spice is here. It's time for fall. People love fall. It's like the shamrock shake. That's right. You don't have a shamrock shake all year. You have it at at March. At, at March. Yeah, at March. <laughs> Mercy. Come on. Yeah, for Christmas. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> am I supposed to actually get my head? Am I supposed to actually get my head in this? Look at this. Are we done with the plates? Is that all our food? <laughs> all right, I'm dumping my plate. Now. I think that right. goes <clears throat> Would you like my meringue? Sure, I'll take your meringue. <clears throat> you can have it all. This is gonna be great. I can't get my head in there. Look at this. <laughs> If you are not actually watching the podcast, if you are listening to the podcast, you need to go back and watch the podcast at this point, whether you watch through the food challenges or not, but I promise this will be worth it. All right, so we're going to do three rounds. (laughs) (laughs) You just get hit in the face. (laughs) Mercy. Oh, my gosh. That sounded a little bit like her war cry. Don't put that's your gonna, face all the way I don't think that's going to hit me. I can't get my head up to there. Don't put so, your face all the way through. So you got to you, push your for, face gonna, forward. If, but if you push it, you're going to get hit in the oh, nose. Really? Stop! <laughs> your wife loves Stop you. Look that. at that, so Aaron. Gonna, Look at that. Three rounds. You know who's going to be. We're all going to get it then. You can't get past it. I mean, how many turns does it take? Marcy. <laughs> I don't you know, know why? You know it. why she put so Four much pumpkin five. spice on there? She loves you. No, because she, she she's going to be you. tasting that in my mustache <laughs> later tonight. Here's what it's makes me nervous. Extra pumpkin for you. Here's what makes me nervous. What makes me nervous is that there's just not enough space Marcy, between the whipped cream and the actual thing. Sorry, it comes my up. See if I should just in there for me. All right, all right. So you got to spin the wheel. Mm. Wait, are we spinning it all together? Actually, you know what? Here, don't spin the wheel. Oh, here, I have here's to spin this gonna, wheel. You're going to click it. Oh, we all have a wheel? Click it all at the same time and just see who gets it. Okay. Uh, so, so, wait, so not everybody's going to get it, probably. We'll just see what happens. All right, so start, click it one time, everybody. <laughs> I can't figure out how. I can feel it. And I've already done it. Click it again. <laughs> click it again. Waiting for Jenny to tell me. <laughs> the suspense. Click it again. Oh, I can see it over there shaking. Click it again. Oh. Click it again. Ugh. Do it again, Aaron. Is this number four? Come on, Aaron. Are we all on four? I'm on like five or six. Oh, you are not. I am too. No, stop. <laughs> I'm on eight. <laughs> so you got four to catch up with me.
choose not to keep going. We have a loser, <laughs> and we have loser. winners. I don't know. I think I'm the winner here. I get the whipped cream. Right, sudden death. Yes, we need a winner of the men now. I think we should spin. All right, you can do that. That is, that's my favorite pumpkin no, spice thing. we should thing. go one at a time and until it goes up. The Cool Whip with the pumpkin and spice you, spice. Right, that's my favorite. Hold on, I'm going to watch Steve. Also, I think I got it in <gasps> my eye. Woo! <laughs> Come on, Aaron. You got to do it. Come on. That's <laughs> funny. She's not gonna taste it out of your beard later today. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and think he's gonna be strangely attracted to me. <laughs> he's smelling pumpkin spice today. More so than usual. Hey, it said it's good for your eyes. It went right in. Uh, the it did go in my eyes. You took so much pumpkin spice on your. Uh, it's, it's steam. Now I, I I just smell like pumpkin spice. I know. Look out, honey. Do they, That's have, good. do they have pumpkin uh, spice uh, that was fun. cologne? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. There we go. That was my favorite. I like the whipped cream with the I pumpkin spice. That was my favorite. Out of everything we tried. What was the pump? The whipped cream with get, the pumpkin you know, spice. I just want to say that it seemed like you and I got way more cream on our face than you did. I don't know. Mine. <laughs> she got all of her jacket. I'm like, oh, it's geez. like everywhere. <laughs> Yes, please. Mm. No, oh, an, no ants on these. I don't think. Are they? Is it like life? She's like, I don't please? know how that happened. It is. Is this stuff Ugh. you're supposed to use on surfaces? Should you use it on your face? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it smells like cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. So what's next? Episode is that 150. It? I don't Episode know. Is that it? That's it. Whoa, that's burning my skin. That's it. What is this? <laughs> the wipes. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's I don't like, know if you're supposed can, to use it on hey, your skin. Can I get like a wet towel? This <laughs> is burning my eyes and my skin. Uh, you have a water bottle. I, I'm, I'm serious. Yes, I'll find one. That would be great. No, just let it let it burn. It's a bleach. Here you go. What it is. It's You've been using your water Aaron. bottle to <laughs> clean off everything else. Yeah, Aaron, this take a drink of your fire. your hot cocoa. It's not hot anymore. But. Oh, is my is it turning red up here? No. Because it feels like it's on fire. <laughs> Cleaning chemicals <laughs> right near my eyes. Well, you could put water on a towel. Ants, chemicals. I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that was fun. That was fun. So 150 episodes. Yep. That's, 150. I mean, that's. Roughly about three years, obviously, right? So we do one a week, and yeah, um, it's uh, it's kind of you think about. So obviously, we started the podcast before everything happened. In we did twenty twenty, but yep. then we transitioned into video because it was thought that video would be more effective for people that are watching, and mm-hmm. um, so we started out audio only. Yep. And we then, started out, we had uh, <clears throat> we had a guest on the podcast every week. Yeah. And kind of that whole idea, Aaron, you've been talking about rescue stories and all of that. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the idea. Come on and share your testimony and share your story and yeah, so to hear the stories like the, that. Are and the original still, are they still out there? Oh, yeah. Everything's out there. You can go, go back, back and, and you can listen. Yeah. So... That's good. Well, good. Well, it's been it's been fun, and obviously we're continuing forward from here. This isn't the yep. end of it, but it is a milestone. Mm-hmm. And so we praise God for you know when you reach milestone, it's like it's been fun, and um, we look forward to what lies ahead in the future. Mm, we do. Who and knows what kind you of know food what? challenges are in? Our That's gonna, right. I I want a declaration right here that Aaron gets to plan episode two hundred. No, I I want to know your. I was quick. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I want to know your opinion. So out of so for the the big episodes we've done the hot wings. Yeah. And we've done bean boozled and we've done pumpkin spice. Which one was the worst? Oh, and we ate. This bean wasn't boozled. a special one, but bean we did boozled. it close. Af- bean boozled. You would say bean boozled also. Yes. You spit the out way more great. today than you did with bean boozled. I love the That's hot because wings. I was challenged to. I had to swallow it. <sighs> wow. I think our first bean food boozled, challenge I would say we bean, boozled, bean boozled was the worst. Was also, peeps. 
Yeah, we did peeps. And I destroyed you. You. you did. Yes. I got like. You did. I don't remember how many. I gave I it got, a good but... effort, though. So. See how many peeps you could fit in your mouth. Yep. I remember yeah, my goal what became to be Alicia because Alicia had done it, right? And so that was my goal. But yes, we did peeps. And the other one we've done. I would rather do the hot wings it wasn't... again over the, the pumpkin spice. Oh, I'd probably do the pumpkin spice. No. Stuff like hot wings. Hot it wings were good. With Those you. were awesome. Yeah. They were all good. <laughs> Every one of them. They were hot. I would, I would do that again in a heartbeat. That was great. Bean I, boozled I, was the worst. I remember sitting right here looking at you. It's like the second to last one. You're like, oh, that's hot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's hot. Aaron would have quit, except that I kept going and he couldn't let me beat him. That's true. So that's how Aaron got through <laughs> the wings there challenge. Wasn't a challenge of, Just oh, come on, Aaron, be a man? That's right. Be a man, Aaron. <laughs> I rose to the challenge. <laughs> Let's just notice that today Aaron spit way more out than anybody else did. So there is that. But it's because you. The like other one that we have done too, though, was the high school had ate what was it like the grasshoppers or crickets yeah, or something, and so then we were challenged to eat those. So we ate those. We've done that on the podcast too. So, and then you tried to make me eat moldy dog biscuits. I did not make you do that. I saw oh, yeah, that biscuits. they were moldy, and then I was like, I am not going to do the this moral to you. Of the story is, Aaron, I'm nicer that than you that. Can take solace in is that we're running out of things to eat. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so there's so many different things that we can try, uh, and true. we don't want to. We don't want to repeat. So it's if, true. Y- you're you're hanging in there. Hanging I'm in pretty sure this will be our last, there. our last ever pumpkin spice challenge. It is lunch and challenge. I don't know what that is, but it sounds terrible because you can only eat one. Is that hot chips? Mm. Yeah, one kinda. hot chip. Mm. One ghost pepper chip. Just one. It sounds like the hot wing. Hey, we did Carolina Reaper sauce on our wings. So it's true. Compared, compared to uh, ghost pepper is mild compared to Carolina yeah. Reaper. It's Been there, true. done that. I mean. That's probably true. I'd probably rather do the hot wing challenge and work my way up into it rather than to have one super hot thing. Like, just by the time you get there, your Does mouth is numb. numb and it as you go. Yeah. yeah. you kind of like, I don't feel it anyway. Or it's Bring it on. Depending on how you look at mm. it. It's true. Hot stuff is cumulative, too. <laughs> just builds up. So. Mm. Anyway, I think it was a couple hours before things started to simmer down, though. After uh-huh. You finished that. It was good. There was a battle going on in my stomach. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, it, hey, look, episode 150. So in the books. Yeah, that's right. Keep keep plowing forward, and who knows how many more we'll do. Hopefully, we do another 150. And yep. if you only join us on 50, 100, and 150, we'll see you next Aaron's year. Aaron's already working on 200, <laughs> so we'll see what he comes up with. It'll be good. It, you know, we're going to – we're gonna. Uh, I do think it's only fair that you get a – I should wear my podcast shirt you. today. But you, you <clears throat> should you – should, uh, you'll have to run it past the producer. Just yep. make sure that – Uh-huh. <laughs> And Jen's open to going on the road with us. That'd be great. <laughs> maybe we should maybe we should have an episode in front of that uh, Newton sign that we have Aaron dance. That would be of. funny. We should do that. We could do a little dance in front of the Newton sign. Oh. <laughs> Reminisce. <laughs> Aaron's like, who drug me out here and made me do I this? Was tricked. Inside joke. I was tricked. Inside joke. Aaron Although you can't find into, the video. Aaron got conned into being in a video one Thank time. Thank you, Trisha. <laughs> oh, we're just going to go meet some people. <laughs> oh, by the way, you've got to be on video, and you have to dance right <laughs> down you rush out. right next to Highway 14 <laughs> and Interstate 80, one of the busiest interstates in the country. <laughs> he was thrilled. You can tell. <laughs> Uh, you might have to. You might have to throw a link. You might in the comments. You might have to throw a link to that video. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's good. The things I do to bring for the gospel for people to know Jesus, Jesus. Right. That's right. It pales in comparison to what he did for me. So that's right. Whatever it is. Amen. Takes. All right. Well, good. Well, that's that ends episode one fifty. That's it. Appreciate everybody having fun with us, and we, you know, it's just sticking around to the we end. We love Jesus. We love having fun, and. So it's always good when the two come together. So mm-hmm. have a have a great week. Looks like the weather's <laughs> going to be so so. It's going to maybe get a little bit cooler, but we're still not yet in fall weather, really. Not quite. Right. Got a little we're getting there. Of it early on, but we're working our way there. But uh, have a good. Hopefully, again, I'm going to throw out a pitch for trunk or treat. If you haven't signed mm-hmm. up for trunk or treat, we need trunks. Please, please um, sign it's, up. It's it's a, it's a great outreach and. Um, it's a way. It is a way of bringing light into darkness, and that that really is what we're called to do. So, perfectly consider 
uh, time's running out on signing up for that as well. But thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you soon. Uh, love you. God bless you. Goodbye. Bye.